a patient presents to the ER complaining of pain in his heart. When the nurse asks him to point to the area that he feels the pain, he places his finger on the bony protuberance just below his rib gauge. Seeing this, the nurse has reason to suspect that his pain may be gastrointestinal or musculoskeletal in origin as well as cardiac. What bony protuberance is this patient likely touching? A. The manubrium. B. The costal cartilage. C. The body of the sternum. D. The xiphoid process. The answer is D. The xiphoid process. The costal cartilage of the ribcage is joined to the sternum, which is made up of three bony structures, the most superior is the manubrium, which articulates not just with the costal cartilage of the first rib but also with the clavicles. The body of the sternum is inferior to the manubrium, and articulates with the second through fifth ribs. The xiphoid process is a small protuberance just below the body of the sternum, at the point where the bottom of the ribcage meets the sternum. It is an attachment point for several muscles, including the diaphragm, the rectus abdominis, and the transverse abdominis. This is a common location for referred pain from gallbladder disease, GERD, or pain due to musculoskeletal injury or irritation. Which of the following is the name of the bony landmark that forms the ridge of the brow? A. The coronoid process. B. The globula. C. The superciliary arch. D. The orbit. The answer is C. The superciliary arch. The bony ridge of the brow is formed by the superciliary processes, superciliary means super, or above, cilia, the lens of the eye. The orbit refers to the bony socket in which the eye sits. The globula is the small depression between the eyebrows where the two superciliary arches meet. The coronoid process is part of the mandible, or jawbone, and unrelated to the brow. What structures of the skull form the cheekbones? A. The mental protuberance. B. The terian. C. The zygomatic arches. D. The styloid processes. The answer is C. The zygomatic arches. The cheekbones are formed by the zygomatic arches, which are part of the temporal bones of the face. The mental protuberance forms the chin, the styloid processes are just under the ears and serve as an attachment point for several muscles of the mouth and throat, and the terian is the suture where the frontal, parietal, temporal, and sphenoid bones come together. Which of the following is the name for the foramen that forms the ear canal? A. The internal auditory meatus. B. The foramen oval. C. The foramen rotundum. D. The external auditory meatus. The answer is D. The external auditory meatus. The foramen that forms the ear canal is called the external auditory meatus. This travels through the temporal bone and joins the inner ear to the outer ear. 
the internal auditory meatus passes through the temporal bone between the posterior cranial fossa and the inner ear, and is the tract through which the vestibulocochlear nerve, the facial nerve, and the labyrinthine artery travel from the inner ear toward the CNS. The foramen oval and foramen rotundum are both openings in the sphenoid bones and have to connection to the ear. What is the name of the large opening through which the spinal cord exits the skull? A. The jugular foramen. B. The foramen secum. C. The foramen magnum. D. The foramen spinosum. The answer is C. The foramen magnum. The large opening in the occipital bone at the base of the skull through which the spinal cord exits the skull is called the foramen magnum, or large hole. It is by far the largest foramen of the skull, and generally measures 1.5 to 3.5 centimeters in the normal adult. The foramen spinosum, foramen secum, and jugular foramen are all smaller foramen of the skull that transmit various blood vessels and cranial nerves. Which of the following bony landmarks of the skull is an attachment point for the splenius capitis, the longissimus capitis, and the posterior belly of the digastric muscle? A. The mandibular contile. B. The mastoid process. C. The coronoid process. D. The styloid process. The answer is B. The mastoid process. The splenius capitis, the longissimus capitis, and the posterior belly of the digastric muscle all attach to the mastoid process, a bony protuberance on the inferior border of the temporal bone. This landmark is also an attachment point for the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The styloid process of the temporal bone is directly anterior to the mastoid process and is an attachment point for multiple ligaments and the styloglossus muscle, the stylohyoid muscle, and the stylopharyngeus muscle. The mandibular contile and coronoid process are both part of the mandible and do not form any attachments to the muscles of the neck. The inferior alveolar nerve exits through what opening in the skull? A. The foramen rotundum. B. The greater palatine foramen. C. The mental foramen. D. The supraorbital foramen. The answer is C. The mental foramen. The inferior alveolar nerve exits through the mental foramina of the chin. This nerve is a branch of the mandibular nerve and supplies sensory innervation to the lower teeth. The foramen rotundum transmits the maxillary nerve. The supraorbital foramina transmit the supraorbital artery, vein, and nerve. The greater palatine foramen is located in the palatine bone and transmits the greater palatine nerve, artery, and vein. The phag cerebri attaches anteriorly to the skull at what landmark? 
A. The orbital plate. B. The cribriform plate. C. The ethmoidal labyrinth. D. The crystagalli. The answer is D. The crystagalli. The phag cerebri, the dura that separates the two hemispheres of the brain, attaches to a bony projection of the ethmoid bone called the crystagalli, or crest of the rooster. This projection is a distinct landmark that arises from the cribriform plate. The ethmoidal labyrinth and orbital plate do not form many attachments to the dura of the brain. The supraspinatus tendon passes under what bony projection of the scapula? A. The acromion. B. The superior angle of the scapula. C. The coracoid process. D. The spine of the scapula. The answer is A. The acromion. The supraspinatus tendon passes under the acromion, a bony hook-like process at the end of the scapular spine. Inflammation of the supraspinatus muscle or tendon can quickly lead to entrapment of this muscle under the acromion, causing pain and reduced mobility. The coracoid process, another projection from the anterior scapula, is an attachment point for several muscles and ligaments including the pectoralis minor and the short head of the biceps brachii. What is the large? fan-like ridge of bone that can be palpated just below the waist. A. The anterior inferior iliac spine. B. The iliac crest. C. The greater sciatic notch. D. The anterior superior iliac spine. The answer is B. The iliac crest. The large, fan-like ridge of bone that can be felt just under the waist is the iliac crest. The anterior superior iliac spine and the anterior inferior iliac spine are smaller protuberances on the ilium that are important landmarks for assessing malpositions of the bones of the sacroiliac joint. The greater sciatic notch is in the posterior ilium and serves as a passage for several muscles and nerves of the pelvic girdle. The head of the femur rests in what bony feature of the pelvis? A. The pubic tubercle. B. The acetabulum. C. The pubic symphysis. D. The obturator foramen. The answer is B. The acetabulum. The head of the femur rests in the acetabulum, a bony socket on the lateral pelvis that is formed by all three bones of the anominate, the ischium, ilium, and the pubis. The pubic symphysis is a midline cartilaginous joint between the pubic bones. The obturator foramen is an opening in the anominate through which multiple nerves and vessels pass. The pubic tubercle is a bony projection on the pubis that serves as an attachment point for inguinal ligament.
What bone of the foot forms the heel? A. The calcanus. B. The cuboid. C. The navicular. D. The talus. The answer is A. The calcanus. All of the bones listed form the posterior portion of the foot. The largest bone in the foot is the calcanus. It forms the heel and articulates with the bones of the ankle. What is the name for the bones that form the anterior portion of the foot, but not the toes? A. The metacarpals. B. The phalanges. C. The metatarsals. D. The kerbals. The answer is C. The metatarsals. The bones that form the anterior half of the foot, but not the toes, are the metatarsals. These are mirrored in the metacarpal bones of the hand. The carpal bones form the wrist, and the phalanges form the toes and the fingers. Which of the following bones does not form part of the pelvis? A. The ischium. B. The ileum. C. The sacrum. D. The ilium. E. The pubis. The answer is B. The ileum. The pelvis is formed by the sacrum and coccyx and the three bones that come together to form the innominate, the ilium, ischium, and the pubis. The ilium is a part of the small intestine. Which of the following structures passes through the superior orbital fissure? A. The ophthalmic nerve, cranial nerve 5, branch V1. B. The abducens nerve, cranial nerve 6. C. The trochlear nerve, cranial nerve 4. D. The superior and inferior divisions of oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve 3. E. All of these. The answer is E. All of these. The superior orbital fissure, an opening in the back of the orbit formed by the lesser and greater wings of the sphenoid bone, has several important structures passing through it. These include the ophthalmic nerve, CN2, the abducens nerve, CN6, the trochlear nerve, CN4, and the superior and inferior divisions of oculomotor nerve, CN3. It also transmits various blood vessels and the sympathetic fibers from the cavernous plexus. Injury to this area can cause a wide range of ocular pathologies including pain, diplopia, ptosis, exophthalmos, and vision impairment or vision loss.
Which of the following is not a fossa of the scapula? A. The subscapular fossa. B. The supraspinous fossa. C. The infraspinatus fossa. D. The suprascapular fossa. The answer is A. The suprascapular fossa. The scapula has multiple fossa that serve as attachment points of various bones and muscles of the shoulder. Among these are the glenoid fossa, where the head of the humerus articulates with the scapula, the subscapular fossa, which is an attachment for the subscapularis muscle, the infraspinous fossa, to which the infraspinatus attaches, and the supraspinous fossa, to which the supraspinatus muscle attaches. There is no suprascapular fossa on the scapula. What is the name of the bone that forms the lower part of the jaw? A. The frontal bone. B. The mandible. C. The zygomatic bone. D. The maxilla. The answer is B. The mandible. The bone that forms the lower part of the jaw is the mandible. It is the largest and most inferior bone in the face, and articulates with the temporal bones at the temporomandibular joints. The maxilla forms the upper jaw, while the zygomatic bone forms the cheek and part of the orbit. All of the following bones of the skull help form the orbit except dash. A. The maxilla. B. The palatine bone. C. The sphenoid. D. The temporal bone. The answer is D. The temporal bone. The orbit is formed by the following bones, the maxilla, the zygomatic bone, the frontal bone, the lacrimal bone, the ethmoid, the sphenoid, and the palatine bone. The temporal bone meets the zygomatic and sphenoid but does not form part of the orbit. All of the following bones form the nasal cavity except dash. A. The nasal bone. B. The vomer. C. The maxilla. D. The sphenoid. The answer is D. The sphenoid. The nasal cavity is formed by the following bones, the maxilla, the vomer, the nasal bone, the palatine bones, the lacrimal bone, and the ethmoid bone. It is also formed by the nasal conchi and the septal cartilage. The sphenoid forms part of the orbit and multiple sinuses but does not form any part of the nasal cavity directly.
you are taking care of a 22-year-old basketball player who fractured his clavicle while playing in a game. Which of the following blood vessels is most likely to be compromised by the fractured bone? A. Facial artery. B. Internal carotid artery. C. Subclavian artery. D. Jugular vein. E. External carotid artery. The answer is C. Subclavian artery. Of the listed vessels, the subclavian artery is located closest to the clavicle, just inferior to the clavicle bone, as the name, subclavian implies. As such, if the clavicle breaks and a sharp fragment is formed, it would be most likely to injure the subclavian artery. The internal and external carotid arteries, and jugular vein are located within the neck but more deep and superior to the clavicle than the subclavian artery. The facial artery is located within the face and as such is located very superiorly to the clavicle bone and is unlikely to be involved by a clavicle fracture. The frontless muscle does which of the following actions? A. Lowers the eyelids. B. Lifts the eyelids. C. Furrows the brow. D. Raises the eyebrows. The answer is D. Raises the eyebrows. The frontless muscle lifts the eyebrows and wrinkles the forehead. The brow is furrowed by the corrugator supercilia muscle, and the eyelids are raised by the levator palpebrae superioris and lowered by the orbicularis oculi. The frontless muscle does which of the following actions? A. Lowers the eyelids. B. Lifts the eyelids. C. Furrows the brow. D. Raises the eyebrows. The answer is A. The coronoid process of the mandible. The masseter is a quadrilateral muscle that originates from the zygomatic arch and maxilla and inserts into the coronoid process of the mandible. Its function is to lift the mandible, closing the jaw. What is the function of the rhizorius? A. Depresses the lower lip. B. Purses the lips. C. Keeps food between the teeth. D. Retracts the angle of the mouth, smiling. The answer is D. Retracts the angle of the mouth, smiling. The rhizorius is a small facial muscle that originates on the parotic fascia and inserts into the modiolus. Its primary action is to retract the corners of the mouth in smiling. The lips are pursed by the orbicularis oris. The mouth is compressed and food is kept between the teeth by the bucinator muscle. The lower lip is depressed by the depressor labii inferioris.
What are the origin and insertion of the orbicularis zoris? A. The mandibular contile, the fascia of the masseter. B. The temporomandibular joint, the bosonator. C. The maxilla and mandible, the skin of the lips. D. The zygomatic arch, the modiolus. The answer is C. The maxilla and mandible, the skin of the lips. The orbicularis oris, a circular muscle that compresses the lips, originates on the maxilla and mandible and inserts into the skin of the lips. Which of the following muscles assists in frowning? A. The auricular muscles. B. The depressor anguli oris. C. The depressor supercilae. D. The temporoparietalis muscle. The answer is B. The depressor anguli oris. The depressor anguli oris is a small triangular muscle that originates on the mandible and inserts into the modiolus. Its main action is to lower the corners of the mouth in frowning. The auricular muscles are a part of the inner ear. The temporoparietalis muscle is a thin muscle covering the temporal bone, and the depressor supercilii is a muscle of the eye. Which of the following muscles controls the amplitude of sound waves in the inner ear? A. The stapedius. B. The auriculares. C. The ciliary muscles. D. The lateral rectus. The answer is A. The stapedius. The stapedius, the smallest muscle in the human body, controls the amplitude of sound vibrations pulling on the neck of the stapes. The auriculars move the ears. The ciliary muscle and the lateral rectus are both muscles of the eye. What is the action of the superior oblique muscle of the eye? A. Elevates the eyelid. B. Externally rotates the eye. C. Depresses and internally rotates the eye. D. Elevates the eye. The answer is C depresses and internally rotates the eye. The superior oblique originates on the annulus of Zin and inserts into the outer posterior eye. Its action is to depress and internally rotate the eye. Which of the following innervates the platysma? A. The motor accessory nerve. B. The facial nerve, CN7. C. The vagus nerve. D. The mylohyoid nerve.
The answer is B. The facial nerve, CN7. The platysma, a sheet like muscle that traverses the neck from the clavicle to the mouth and jaw, is innervated by the cervical branch of the facial nerve, CN7. Which of the following muscles has its origin on the mastoid process of the temporal bone? A. The semispinless capitis. B. The splenius capitis. C. The rectus capitis posterior major. D. The rectus capitis posterior minor. The answer is B. The splenius capitis. The splenius capitis, one of the main extenders of the neck, has its origin on the mastoid process of the temporal bone. The rectus capitis posterior minor, the rectus capitis posterior major, and the semispinless capitis all originate on the knuckle line of the occipital bone. What are the main muscles responsible for keeping an upright spinal position? A. The levator's costarum. B. The rhomboids. C. The erector's spinae. D. The latissimus dorsi. The answer is C. The erector's spinae. While all of the muscles listed are part of the structure and mobility of the back, the main muscle group responsible for maintaining erect posture in the erector spinae. Which of the following is not a part of the erector spiny muscle group? A. The iliacostalus. B. The longissimus. C. The spineless. D. The trapezius. The answer is D. The trapezius. The main muscle groups that make up the erector spinae are the iliacostalus muscles, the longissimus muscles, and the spineless. The trapezius is not a part of the erector spinae group. Which of the following is a muscle of mastication? A. The temporalis. B. The lateral tragoid. C. The medial tragoid. D. All of these. The answer is D. All of these. Mastication relies on four major muscles the masseter, the temporalis, the medial tragoid, and the lateral tragoid.
which of the following cranial nerve, CN, innervates the genia glossus? A. CN4, the trochlear nerve. B. CN12, the hypoglossal nerve. C. CN9, the glossopharyngeal nerve. D. CN7, the facial nerve. The answer is B. CN12, the hypoglossal nerve. The genioglossus, the main muscle that protrudes the tongue, is innervated by the hypoglossal nerve, or CN12. What is the origin of the inferior oblique muscle of the eye? A. The sphenoid bone. B. The infraorbital margin. C. The annulus of sin. D. The maxilla. The answer is D. The maxilla. The inferior oblique muscle of the eye, an extrinsic muscle that externally rotates and abducts the eye, has its origin on the orbital surface of the maxilla. What is the action of the sternocleidomastoid? A. Laterally flex the neck. B. Accessory respiratory muscle. C. Extend the neck. D. All of these are correct. The answer is D. All of these are correct. The sternocleidomastoid, a long muscle that originates on the manubrium and the clavicle and inserts into the mastoid process, has several functions, when functioning unilaterally, it rotates the head, flexes the neck, and laterally flexes the neck. When functioning bilaterally, this muscle also extends the neck and is an accessory respiratory muscle. Calcium is required for all of the following except dash. A. Muscle contraction. B. Nerve conduction. C. Blood clotting. D. All of these require calcium. The answer is D. All of these require calcium. Calcium is essential for many processes of the body, including but not limited to nerve conduction, muscle contraction, blood clotting, and bone mineralization. Which of the following lists the zones of ossification in the correct order? A. Resting, proliferation, maturation, calcification, ossification. B. Maturation, proliferation, resting ossification, calcification, c. proliferation, calcification, maturation, ossification, resting, d. proliferation, maturation, resting, calcification, ossification. The answer is a. resting, proliferation maturation, calcification, ossification. 
There are five distinct zones in regions of endochondral ossification. These are the resting zone, the zone of proliferation, the zone of maturation, the zone of calcification, and the zone of ossification. In what zone of intochondral ossification do the chondrocytes typically die off, leaving cavities for colonization by osteoprogenitor cells? A. The zone of proliferation. B. The zone of ossification. C. The zone of maturation. D. The resting zone. E. The zone of calcification. The answer is E. The zone of calcification. The behavior of cells in the zones of intochondral ossification is as follows, the resting zone, normal resting chondrocytes within hyaline cartilage. The zone of proliferation, rapid mitosis of chondrocytes. The zone of maturation, hypertrophy of chondrocytes. The zone of calcification. The death of chondrocytes due to lack of nutrients and inability to eliminate cellular wastes. The zone of ossification, migration of osteoprogenitor cells into the cavities left behind by dead chondrocytes and mineralization of newly formed bone. Which of the following mineral gives bone its rigid structure? A. Phosphate. B. Calcium. C. Collagen. D. Hydroxyapatide. The answer is D. Hydroxyapatide. The rigid structure of bone is created by hydroxyapatide, a calcium apatite that contains both calcium and phosphate in the formula, CA5PO4,3,OH. Both calcium and phosphate are necessary to create bone structure, a deficiency of either will degrade the structural integrity of the bone matrix. Last, collagen is a protein rather than a mineral and primarily functions to add flexibility to bone in order to prevent fracture. Bones are made up of which of the following three tissue types? A. Compact bone, white marrow, and red marrow. B. Canceless bone, spongy bone, and trabcular bone. C. Canceless bone, fat, and bone marrow. D. Cortical bone, canceless bone, and bone marrow. The answer is D. Cortical bone, canceless bone, and bone marrow. Bones are made up of the following three primary tissue types. 1. Cortical bone, which is the hard exterior layer, also referred to as compact bone. 2. Canceless bone, which is the porous bone tissue that fills the center of bones, also referred to as spongy bone or trabcular bone tissue, and 3. Bone marrow, a hematopoietic tissue that fills spaces in trabcular bone.
Which of the following is the term for the functional unit of compact bone? A. Lamellae. B. Haversian canal. C. Ostean. D. Trabgillate. The answer is C. Ostean. The functional unit of compact bone is the ostean. The ostean is formed by concentric layers of compact bone called lamellae. These surround a central canal called the haversian canal. Trabgillae are the functional units of cancellous, spongy, bone. Which of the following cells is responsible for depositing hydroxyapatite into bone matrix? A. Osteoclasts. B. Osteoblasts. C. Osteocytes. D. Myelocytes. The answer is B. Osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are the cells responsible for the deposition of hydroxyapatite into bone matrix. In addition to hydroxyapatite, they synthesize collagen, osteocalcin, and osteopon. Osteocytes are undifferentiated osteoblasts, while osteoclast cells function in opposition to osteoblasts by removal of mineralization from the bony matrix. Myelocytes and normoblasts are both hematopoietic cells of the bone marrow and do not take part in bone mineralization. Which of the following is in the Haversian Canal? A. Red Bone Marrow B. Periostum C. White Bone Marrow D. Capillaries and Nerves The answer is D. Capillaries and Nerves the Haversian canal allows capillaries and nerves to pass through the cortical bone to nourish osteocytes, osteoclasts, and osteoblasts. Both the white and the red bone marrow are contained within trabgular bone, while the periostum is a thin, highly innervated membrane on the outside of bone. In regards to bone marrow, red marrow is primarily made up of underscore cells, while yellow marrow is primarily made up of underscore cells. A. Hematopoietic. Fat. B. Proliferating. Calcified. C. Active. Dormant. D. Erythrocytic. Leukocytic. The answer is A. Hematopoietic. Fat. Variation in color of bone marrow cells is not related to their level of activity, calcification, or the types of blood cells they produce. Rather, red marrow is primarily hematopoietic cells, both red and white progenitor cells, while yellow marrow is primarily composed of fat cells. Growth in long bones must occur at the dash. A. Epiphyseal plate. B. Diaphysis. C. Suture. D. Epiphysis.
The answer is A. Epiphyseal plate. Growth in long bones occurs at the epiphyseal plate, a region of hyaline cartilage at the metaphysis of the bone. In adolescents and children, cartilage cells are ossified by osteoblasts to increase bone length. Once adulthood is reached, the epiphyseal plate becomes the epiphyseal line at the junction of the epiphysis and the diaphysis, the center of the bone. The diaphysis and epiphysis themselves are composed of mature ossified bone and do not proliferate, they are simply added to by transformation of cells in the epiphyseal plate. A suture is a fibrous joint of the cranium and does not contribute to the development of long bones. The length of long bones is increased via the hypertrophy and eventual apoptosis of chondrocytes which leave cavities that are then colonized by osteoprogenitor cells. This process is referred to as dash. A. Osteoblast mineralization. B. Apoptotic ossification. C. Intichondral ossification. D. Intichondral mineralization. The answer is C. Endochondral ossification. Long bones are lengthened during childhood and adolescence via a process referred to as endochondral ossification. In this process, chondrocytes of the growth plate hypertrophy and eventual die, leaving cavities that are then colonized by osteoprogenitor cells. These osteoprogenitor cells then differentiate into osteoblasts, which mineralize the newly forming bone. None of the other answers are actual processes in bone formation or physiology. Which of the following is not a common site of hematopoietic bone marrow in an adult? A. Pelvis. B. Sternum. C. Skull. D. Tibia and fibula. The answer is D. Tibia and fibula. In adults. Hematopoietic bone marrow is generally confined to the flat bones, including the sternum, the skull, the ribs, and the pelvis. Hematopoietic bone marrow also exists in the proximal end of the femur in most adults, but is not generally found in the tibia or fibula. Muscle is attached to the periostom of bone via which of the following? A. Articular cartilage. B. Sutures. C. Ligaments. D. Tendons. The answer is D. Tendons. Muscle attaches to bone via tendons, fibrous extensions of the sheath of the muscle body that are primarily composed of tightly packed collagen fibers. In comparison, Ligaments attach bones to other bones without involvement with a muscle, such as the ligaments between the metacarpals of the wrist. Sutures are fibrous joints of the cranium, and hyaline cartilage is at the point of articulation of many bones but it is neither incorporated into muscle structure, nor does it attach to the bone with which it articulates. Rather, articular cartilage primarily serves to allow bones to glide more easily over each other during movement.
The individual unit of muscle contraction in a muscle fibril is referred to as the dash. A. Sarcoplasmic reticulum. B. Sarcolemma. C. Sliding filament. D. Sarcomere. The answer is D. Sarcomere. The individual contractile unit of a muscle fibril is referred to as the sarcomere. These units are made of actin and myosin filaments and joined by Z lines. The sliding filament theory refers to the idea that muscle contraction is the result of myosin strands within the fibril pulling themselves along actin strands similar to pulling on a rope, which shortens the whole sarcomere. The sarcolemma is the specialized cell membrane around the muscle fibril. And the sarcoplasmic reticulum is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum found within the muscle cell. Which of the following is the correct order of structures in a skeletal muscle, from largest to smallest? A. Fiber, fascicle, fibril. B. Fiber, fibril, fascicle. C. Fibril, fascicle, fiber. D. Fascicle, fiber, fibril. E. Fascicle, fibril, fiber. The answer is D. Fascicle, fiber, fibril. The largest unit of muscle tissue is the fascicle. Each fascicle is made up of a bundle of muscle fibers, and every muscle fiber is made up of many fibrils, called myofibrils.